an ancient artifact hidden beneath the sea whose secrets that challenge our very comprehension of history. Some say it is a window into a lost civilization's mastery over the stars, a code that could unravel the fabric of time itself or a link to an otherworldly knowledge, a relic that defies all explanation. It unlocks a chapter of human innovation and wonder, the Antikythera Mechanism. Antikythera, a Greek island situated in the Mediterranean Sea, covers a land area of 20 and a half square kilometers and housed only 34 inhabitants according to the 2011 census. Despite its current sparse population, the island was once a bustling hub due to its strategic geographical position serving as a critical stopover for migratory birds during their seasonal movement. The island drew seasonal hunters keen on pursuing hunting activities. Furthermore, its location along vital maritime routes between the Peloponnese and Creed and the eastern and central Mediterranean attracted a substantial number of pirates, further enhancing the island's historical significance. In 1900, a diver exploring 45 meters beneath the sea surface of the Antikythera Islands coast came upon a shipwreck. Time had buried this ship under layers of mud and sand, leaving it in a sorry condition. The Greek government, alerted to the discovery, swiftly sent an expedition led by the Hellenic Royal Navy. This wreck turned out to be a Roman trading vessel filled with an array of treasures, including bronze and marble statues, pottery, glassware, jewelry, and coins. Inside a wooden box lay an object like no other known to history at that time, a complex device that promised to change our understanding of the past. On the 17th of May, 1902, Valerius Stice, an archaeologist, made an extraordinary discovery among the retrieved relics identifying three main fragments containing gears or teeth. Unlike other artistic pieces recovered, this seemed more like a mechanism. Its significance and complexity were fully recognized only decades later. Researchers subsequently divided the three main fragments into 82 separate pieces during conservation. This corroded bronze relic named the Antikythera mechanism after its discovery place, was created by an unidentified Greek scientist over 2,200 years ago. Its myriad of gears and switches continues to mystify us. Some say that the items found may not all originate from the shipwreck. It is possible that over centuries, passing ships might have dropped objects near the original wreck merging artifacts from various time. Nevertheless, it has been verified this particular mechanism did come from the shipwreck, affirming that the earliest gears known were crafted 2,200 years ago. The question remains, how did people with only bronze tools create such a device? Its function is still unknown, and a century ago, there were no advanced tools to fully explore the mechanism. Initially, only a single gear wheel was discovered, likely just a small part of the whole. Unearthing more fragments seemed the only way to solve the mystery, and over the following decade, archaeologists sought more pieces. One key contributor in this search was Jacques Cousteau, the French naval officer, oceanographer, filmmaker, and author. Seven decades after the wreck's initial discovery, Cousteau's explorations in the 1970s led to finding numerous Rodian-style vessels and part of the ship's hull, identifying it as a rolling sail ship like those in Caribbean pirate tales. Such vessels were warships or large commercial ships, 
the latter being the equivalent of today's massive container vessels. Cousteau's discoveries also included coins that were crucial in dating the ship. The diverse origins of these coins helped trace the ship's trade route. Conclusively, the vessel was identified as a large Roman merchant ship that had been laden with precious art, possibly through trade or plunder, and coins from various conquered nations. While sailing to Rome, the ship met its demise near Antikythera Island during a storm, sinking with its valuable cargo to rest on the seabed for over 2,000 years. Decades were spent attempting to discern the nature of the mysterious object discovered off the coast of Antikythera. The development of X-ray tomography technology played a crucial role in slowly unraveling its secrets. With this innovation, the interior of the object could be scanned, revealing a complex arrangement of gears layered one atop another within the small fragments. At first, the X-ray technology could only scan vertically, making it challenging to determine the exact number of gears stacked together. After several years of study, it was finally concluded that there were 27 gears within this portion of the device. This led to an estimation that the entire mechanism might contain at least 70 gears. The presence of so many intricate gears led scholars to identify the object as a form of mechanical computer. Unlike today's electronic computers, mechanical computers use complex mechanical structures to perform calculations. Though their exact functions may not always be clear, thus the Antikythera mechanism has come to be recognized as the world's earliest computer. Historically, the first complex mechanical structures known to have appeared in 14th century Europe were mechanical clocks, primarily found in church towers. The Antikythera mechanism, however, surpasses even that in complexity. The earliest known mechanical computer, named the Pascaline, was invented by the French mathematician Blaise Pascal around 1642 and was capable of simple arithmetic operations. Yet, the first truly programmable device for general computation was Charles Babbage's 19th century design of the analytical engine. Remarkably, the craftsmanship of the Antikythera mechanism appears to be on par with that 19th century innovation, placing it a staggering 2,000 years ahead of the technological advancements of its time. This phenomenon gives rise to the term old part, out of place artifact referring to artifacts exhibiting a level of technology or design seemingly too advanced for their historical context. It is akin to the idea of time travel. A 2,000-year technological gap is comparable to the incongruity of Jesus encountering an iPhone. Some of the comparisons made by archaeologists at the time were even more extravagant, likening a discovery to unearthing a fighter jet from Pharaoh's tomb. So, what was this device actually calculating? Such a complex calculator surely had a significant purpose. It took archaeologists a long time to figure it out. They determined that it is an astronomical computer designed to calculate celestial movements. The key to understanding was the number of teeth on the gears. They found a gear on the front with 127 teeth, and on the back there was a number inscribed. 235. While meaningless to most of us, this number was a signal to the archaeologists, appearing in both ancient Greek astronomy and religious literature. In ancient Greece, time was measured by observing the moon's faces, each cycle of which represented a month. The Greeks used a cycle called the synodic month, lasting 29.5 days. So, 12 months added up to 354 days, 11 days short of our solar year. To reconcile this difference, they added extra months, and long-term observation revealed that 235 synodic months equaled 19 solar years. Hence, the appearance of the number 235 
with a scale bearing this number, representing 235 synodic months. The device's gear, making one full rotation, symbolized the entire circle of the Sun, Moon and Earth in 19 years. The Greeks also knew of another lunar cycle, the sidereal month, lasting 27.3 days. 19 years equaled 254 sidereal months, and the gear with 127 teeth, being half of 254, worked in conjunction with another gear to achieve this period. The archaeologists suspected that making 254 teeth was likely too arduous, so 127 teeth were used instead. Apart from this gear, there was another larger one, mostly missing, with an estimated 220 to 225 teeth. A faint number, 223, was later discovered on the back, signifying the number of teeth. What did these 223 teeth represent? The ancient Greek literature had no answers, but a discovery on Babylonian clay tablets revealed that 223 months precisely corresponded to the period of a total solar eclipse. Thus, the largest gear was used to calculate solar eclipses, with the smaller gears calculating lunar ones. Further evidence on Babylonian clay tablets from later periods demonstrated knowledge of the Saros cycle, hinting at its understanding by Mesopotamian astronomers. This evidence suggests that the creators of the Antikythera mechanism were proficient in both Greek and Babylonian astronomy. Even more impressively, subsequent investigations of the gears revealed inscriptions specifying times and colors. This reveals that the mechanism could predict not just the date of solar and lunar eclipses, but also the exact moment they would transpire. Eclipses are fleeting phenomena, yet the mechanism was capable of pinpointing the precise minute they would occur. A further feature of the mechanism is a lunar phase indicator. This was represented by a small sphere, split between white and black, incorporated into the lunar pointer. This sphere would rotate to reflect the current phase of the moon. Remarkably, a gear with 53 teeth was discovered within the mechanism. Despite its simplicity, this gear performs a crucial function. Given our current knowledge, we know that the Moon's orbit around the Earth is not circular, but elliptical. And this elliptical orbit shifts over a nine-year cycle. To simulate the Moon's movement accurately, the mechanism needs to account for this orbital shift. The gear with 53 teeth serves to adjust for this deviation, with a precision to the ninth decimal place. Further investigation revealed a slot on the front of this gear, housing a circular object of unknown purpose. After employing 3D scanning technology to scan and assemble the entire machine, they noticed this object moved when the gear was rotated. This is when it dawned on them that a circular object symbolized the moon. As the gear rotated, the moon-like object moved closer and further away replicating the Moon's elliptical orbit around Earth. They observed celestial movement from Earth, akin to what we see from space today. The Antikythera mechanism appears to be a highly accurate computational model of astronomical movement, not merely a static representation, but a dynamic replication of the solar system. It is believed that a panel once existed on the machine's front, hiding these components behind it. The machine's movements likely corresponded to the motion of several planets displayed on the panel. On further analysis, a pattern emerged. The numbers associated with the mechanism 53, 127, 223, as well as the earlier mentioned 19 years are prime numbers. This reflects a highly optimized, meticulous system. Interestingly, all gear teeth are odd numbers, showing the immense processing challenge. Making even number teeth for gears is easier as circles can be equally divided into 2, 4, 6, 8, and symmetrical teeth are easy to create. Odd numbers, however, are challenging. 
to create a gear with 223 teeth. Each tooth must be slightly smaller to fit an extra tooth in the circle. This process is incredibly challenging, even today, let alone during the Bronze Age. This brings us to the question. Why did people over 2,000 years ago need such detailed knowledge of celestial movements? Were they planning to land on the moon? First, ancient civilizations heavily depended on celestial bodies for their livelihood. Having a machine that predicted celestial movements accurately could have been beneficial for various activities, including farming. Second, this device could precisely predict solar and lunar eclipses, an invaluable tool for the ancient rulers. A king predicting a solar eclipse could stage ceremony activities, leading the populace to view him as a divine entity. The importance of this mechanism is clear, yet its construction remains a mystery. Who could have designed this sophisticated mechanism? Who? had such profound knowledge of astronomy, mathematics, and physics. Some say that the Antikythera mechanism was, in fact, a drifted artifact drifting through time and space, ultimately making it appear as an out-of-place artifact. Or others propose that the creators of Antikythera mechanism at that time were in contact with highly advanced extraterrestrial beings. This connection might elucidate why contemporary technology still struggles to reconstruct marvels like the pyramids. Some even say that the Antikythera mechanism could very well have been a teaching tool or a toy devised by these alien beings to enlighten inferior civilizations about the cosmos. There are many speculations regarding the creator, but that remains a mystery. Rhodes, the largest of Greece's Dodecanese islands, is often identified as a potential birthplace of the Antikythera mechanism. It was known for its advanced civilization and legendary wonders, like the colossal statue of Helios, the sun god. This mammoth statue, echoing scenes from Game of Thrones, was constructed in 292 BC, stood proudly for 54 years before an earthquake brought it down in 226 BC. Greek poet Pindar, who lived around 500 BC, described Rhodes as a place of incredible innovation, with statues appearing to move of their own accord. But his tales, while fascinating, are a mix of fact and folklore, much like the stories of Atlantis. The Aegean Islands each carried a sense of divinity, being creations of Zeus's sons. These historical accounts, while enchanting, are layered with mystery. Was it possible that the Rhodesians constructed this bronze behemoth, the Colossus of Rhodes? And if so, could they also have crafted the intricate Antikythera mechanism? Details about the people of Rhodes are vague, yet their technological prowess was undeniable. Interestingly, the gear within the mechanism carried an ancient term for the moon, specific to the city-state of Corinth. Once a powerful city, Corinth was established thousands of years ago, possibly predating even the Sumerian civilization. Named by Zeus's son, Cronus, Corinth was as influential as Athens at its zenith, among the Corinthians' lineage, one figure stands out, the remarkable Archimedes, an expert in mathematics, physics, astronomy, and invention. Could he have been the mastermind behind the Antikythera mechanism? The search for answers continues. Archimedes Born around 287 BC in the ancient Greek colonies of Syracuse, now located in Italy, was an astronomical genius, physicist, and inventor. He hailed from the lineage of the Corinthians and was thus intricately connected to Greek civilization. Historical records have revealed his remarkable ability to construct a hydraulic-based astronomical calculator 
capable of predicting celestial movements, including solar and lunar eclipses. His genius was not confined to the cosmos. He also developed incredible defensive machines, including the renowned Death Ray, which utilized large mirrors to focus sunlight and set enemy ships aflame. The Romans, under General Marcellus, found Syracuse a formidable city to capture, largely due to Archimedes' inventions, which included ship-lifting mechanisms. A prolonged siege eventually led to Syracuse's downfall. And Archimedes met his tragic end at the hands of Roman soldier. His last words, pleading for his geometric figures, remain recorded in history. Cicero's On the Republic later referred to the theft of Archimedes' celestial machines by the Romans, a claim dismissed by archaeologists as fiction until the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism. Found in a shipwreck in 1901, this artifact was a real-life confirmation of Cicero's description. Though one of the machines remains lost to history, its discovery opened a new chapter in our understanding of ancient technological capabilities. Now housed in the National Archaeological Museum of Athens, the Antikythera mechanism, though displayed as a replica, carries a value beyond any masterpiece, including the Mona Lisa. Its existence challenges our assumptions about ancient civilizations, revealing a world far more advanced and complex than previously imagined. Whether Archimedes' direct hand and its creation will ever be proven remains a tantalizing mystery, a missing link to a forgotten era of invasion that vanished with the death of a genius and lay dormant for over 2,000 years. As the echoes of ancient wisdom continue to resonate through the ages, the enigma of the Antikythera mechanism lingers like a whisper in the shadows of history. Some say it holds the keys to forgotten secrets, a blueprint of cosmic synchronicity, or even a message from a civilization lost to time. Will its true purpose ever be uncovered? Or will it remain a tantalizing mystery? challenging us to reach beyond the known and touch the fabric of the unknown. Only time will unravel the answers. As we continue to ponder the inexorable question, what if? The Antikythera mechanism, a riddle that transcends our world, may forever be a beacon of intrigue and wonder.